Hi there, I'm Eitan, and welcome back to the Wix Wiz. Have you ever wondered how social media websites seem to work so fast that as soon as you hit that like button or you comment on a post, it immediately updates your UI and it doesn't even seem to be using the internet at all? That has to do with optimistic rendering. So if you want to learn how to implement something like that on your Wix website, let's get started. So before I explain how optimistic rendering works and how it compares to pessimistic rendering, first I want to say that this is going to be a walkthrough video. So all the code is already written out and I'm just going to be walking you through what the code looks like and what the implications are for optimistic and pessimistic rendering. If you want to see how I built this code and kind of go with me step by step through all of my blunders and corrections, then I will be releasing the code along version of this tutorial. And you can go ahead and check that out and follow along. So what do we have here uh, in terms of setup? So I have a repeater. And this is a repeater that is kind of meant to look like some kind of social media feed. And you have these posts which have title content, and you have a like button and a likes count. So how many people have liked that post? In addition, I have a CMS, I have a collection, which is the posts collection. And the way that it works is that it has the title and content of each post, as well as an array, which stores the member IDs of whoever has liked this post before. In order to handle the liking of the posts themselves, we have this API in the back end, which is the likes API. Let me just zoom in so you can see that a little better. And essentially what it does is it verifies that the member has not liked the post before, updates the post by pushing the member ID to the likes array, and returns the updated post to the front end. In terms of the front end setup, so we have the main function, which is the load page, uh, load post page function. And essentially what that does is it goes ahead and it loads a few things. It checks for a member, and if it does, it updates the global member variable. And we have a function which binds the event listeners primarily for the repeater. And we have another function which retrieves the post data from our collection and uses it to populate the repeater. So both of these are quite straightforward. And most of our action is going to be happening here in the bind event listeners function. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So here we have an on item ready for the repeater. And essentially what we do is we set up all of the repeaters or the posts content. And that's the title, the content and the like count. Okay. And then we have a on click event listener for our like button. And currently it is running a function called render pessimistically. Okay, and this is what a pessimistic rendering would look like. And pessimistic is just what you've been used to until now. So it's not optimistic. And here we have another function which is called render optimistically. And that will run our optimistic render function. So before I hop in and explain each of these functions and how it works, let's just do a brief overview of what rendering pessimistically versus optimistically means. So rendering pessimistically essentially means that once you take an action on the website that requires some kind of network request, you are going to wait for that network response to come back before you update the UI. And you will only update the UI if the network request comes back positively. But if there's some kind of error, then you won't update the UI at all. So in the case of a like button, if the person clicks like, you will send a request to the API, check the collection, update the collection, and get the response back with the updated post. Only then will you update the like button. With rendering optimistically, what you do is as soon as the action is taken, you update the UI as if you're being optimistic that the response will come back positive, And then you only revert back to the previous state if you did not receive the expected response from the network request, i.e. you have some kind of error. So let's take a look at what that looks like actually in the code. So in the render pessimistically, what we're doing is we are first getting this updated post from the API. And then if there's some kind of error, then we display the error message. 
And we're also in a try catch. So if there's some kind of network error, then we also catch that error and we display the error message. And the only case where we actually update the, act the item, the corresponding item in the repeater is if we had a successful response from the network, and then we update the like count to be the like count of the updated post, and we disable the like button in order to indicate to the person that they can't like the post again. I also added in this just kind of sparks animation just to show the liking of the post, uh, but that's just really, you know, all for the flash. Uh, so let's take a look and see what this render pessimistically function would look like on our live site. So I'm just going to verify that this version of the site is published and let's head over to the live site. So here I am on the live site. I'm going to go ahead and refresh and you'll notice that I have the member area set up and I'm currently logged in as a member and that's why I have the permission to like posts. So I'm going to go over, over here and like this first post and you'll notice that after I click the like button it took maybe half a second, maybe a second until it actually rendered on the UI. So it took a second for the nine to update to a nine, and it took a second for the like button to kind of enter this disabled state. And obviously I can still like my other posts if I want to, but let's see what this would look like if I was rendering optimistically. So I'm gonna go back to the code on the site and what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch out this render pessimistically function for the render optimistically function. And before we actually check this out on the live site, let's take a look at the function and see how it differs from the render pessimistically. So here you'll see that when I render optimistically, the first thing that I do is I update the UI. And since I don't have the updated posts, um, the updated posts, response yet from the API. I just use the previous item data in order to increment the likes by one and I disable the like button. And at this point, I don't even know if I've successfully liked the post or not. Then I actually make the network request. And in the case of an error, then I revert to the previous state, which essentially means returning the like count to the previous like count and enabling the like buttons so that the person can try to like again. Okay, so that is the difference between the pessimistic and the optimistic rendering. And let's see what it looks like when I like a post with this optimistic rendering. So I'm gonna go ahead back to our live site. I'm gonna refresh with this new update. And I'm gonna try and like this second post over here. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here to the second post. I'm gonna click like. And you saw that the moment that I clicked the like button, it rendered my like. So it changed to two and it disabled the like, uh, the like button. And the fact that I haven't currently reverted to the previous state indicates to me that my network request was successful and that I've actually liked the post. And if I go ahead and I refresh this page and reload the data on the page, we can see that indeed the actual like has been stored in my database and everything is working as expected. Now let's see what this optimistic rendering would look like if there was some kind of error in the backend. So I'm going to go back to my site. I'm going to head to the backend file. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, before I actually update my post, I'm going to throw an error. Okay. And essentially what this will do is it will trigger that try catch and it won't actually return an updated post. And this should show us what an error would look like in optimistic rendering. So I'm gonna go ahead and click publish. And I'm gonna go back to the live site, refresh with this update. And let's scroll down to the bottom post and let me try liking it. So I tried to like, and you saw that the moment that I click like, it did show that I liked the post. So it showed five and then it showed that the like button was disabled. But then moments afterwards, after I got back that error, it reverted back to the previous state. And no matter how many times I try to like, it'll always be the same. And obviously this would be a little frustrating for a user um, if there was some kind of consistent error. But because we're being optimistic, we're choosing to render the UI in this way because we assume 
that in 99.9% .9 of the cases, we won't have some kind of network error. And only in that 0.01 cases will we actually have that kind of negative user experience. And overall, we're improving the user experience by showing much more instantaneous UI changes on our website. So that is optimistic rendering in a nutshell and how to handle it on Wix. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a like. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can ask them in the comments below. You can also check out the code along version of this, which really walks through each step of how I wrote this code and the logic behind it. And that might help you understand things a little better. If you like this kind of tutorial about Wix and Velo and coding, then you can go ahead and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.